Hello you vacuous spiders, Jim Sterling here and this is Bloodborne. This is uh, some footage that I took off the PS4 while I was playing it for review. I don't know uh, how much usable footage I ever got. I mean, I got 10 gigs of the stuff. But this, we're going to kick off with probably my least liked bit of the game. It's still good, everything's good in the game. Um, as you will see from my 10 out of 10 review on thegymquisition.com um, I tend, it's actually the very first 10 out of 10 I've given on thegymquisition.com admittedly in its uh, not huge lifespan but this is Bergenworth now of course be aware there are spoilers and whatnot in this video because um, these are some of the later levels uh, this is Bergenworth this is hinted at several times in the game and there is a hunter in there that basically ruined my life for um, <laughs> for one evening uh, this is this uh, particular battle I have with it uh, is either the last or the second to last I can't quite remember we'll find out but I will show you the very undignified way in which I finally beat it. But there are some NPCs in the world who are um, hostile to you, and they take the form of other hunters, presumably driven mad uh, for some reason or another. I won't go too much into the lore. There's a lot of weird story stuff to cut through. And they are complete assholes, Complete fucking assholes, As we're about to find out. This is... Uh, my personally most hated of them. We have here fighting with, I believe, a threaded cane. She does. But, oh yeah, this is the moment I decided to just try and run away from it. Oh yeah, didn't work. I thought I could circle round and go up the stairs, but you could just see her in the background there. She's coming. Oh, she's coming. That's it, I'd never gotten up here before. So I tried to just make a run for it. Then that's just one hit of uh, the magic. Because she's got magic. Oh yeah. You don't let that hit you. Don't let it hit you. So that was an attempt to try and avoid death. <laughs> it didn't go too well. Just let this load. The um, loading times are perhaps my only issue with the game, which isn't generally an issue if you're not like me and you don't die a lot. If you're not like me and you do die a lot. No, you don't like. Yeah, no, I was right the first time. I'm sorry. It's. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't talk properly today. Uh, I don't know if you've heard. I, I was in the in the hospital recently and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get back into the saddle of things. I'm feeling quite good now actually. Um, just a little, just a little tired from everything. But, just sitting here chatting about Bloodborne I find is quite therapeutic. So, I don't consider myself working right now, talking to you lovely children. I can't remember if this is the point I decided that um, there was no way I was getting out of this without fighting her, or if I still tried to be, um, crafty. Oh yeah, I tried to be crafty. If I recall correctly, I did actually get up there and get what I needed, and then still worked out there was no way I was doing this. That's bad. But yeah, she's got a cane which she hits you with really quickly, um, and... Uh, tentacles that come out of her hand and can fire that just kind of array of magic missile shit. And that's, that's the kicker. It's hard enough without that. Better believe she's got it though. So I spent a lot of the game uh, dressed up like this. Just kind of this uh, rat king looking thing. Can't really see my face here but I did accidentally make um, Mr. Freeze. I messed around with skin tones a bit too much and made my character bright blue, which I didn't intend to do. And you also can get goggles uh, at character creation, because this is, they're going with that kind of more gothic-y thing, so they let you, they modernise the stuff a little bit. It's kind of a Victorian-ish uh, look to it sometimes, so you can get some goggles that look all kind of steampunky, and I put them on damn right, and I even tinged them um, red a little bit. And then, once I was done with character creation and actually saw it in-game, I was like, I've made Mr. Freeze. 
with Beethoven there. Um, and I was quite amused by that. Wouldn't have gone as blue, but there you go. But I wore this mostly because it's cool. I mean, the thing about this game is um, you get all the different kinds of clothing. And some have higher defence values, but they're all... I feel like they're all useful in their own ways, depending on what it is you want. This one in particular has actually saved my life in one area of the game um, due to its poison resistance that it gives you. Poison doesn't come up often, but when it does come up, it's, uh, it's an annoyance. Grab our echoes, which I called mentally soul throughout the whole thing. Here I am, um, trying to... Again, trying to be clever. This was about the time I realised I was not getting out of here without killing her first. In, in honestly, in all honesty, I didn't know at that point what lied beyond that balcony, uh, which I won't tell you about in this video, but every time I could have been fast and got up there and done it, but I decided already that no, I'd had enough. This was the last stand. And... Did actually do it. I mean, it, it, I don't have footage of every instance in which she'd killed me up to this point, but she'd killed me a lot up to this point. It was good. You can kind of tell I really don't want to do it. I'm fighting with Ludwig's sword, by the way. I even put the fire on. That's how you know it's serious business, especially when you miss. used up some of my fire paper there. But I'm always worried to uh, stay nearer and away from her. I'm always, every time by this point, every time I was fighting her, I was doing my best to um, make sure I had somewhere to hide when she pulled that shit on me. I needed something. I needed some distance so I could just run away or something to hide behind. So I'm using Ludwig's sword, which I liked a lot. It has a big, heavy version, and you can split it up and have a little one with your gun. Um, I described this in the review, actually, as a sword that you put inside another sword for when you want too much sword. Which is nice. But, um... Yeah, what I really like about weapon transformation is... is both weapons, in my experience, are very useful in their right circumstances. I overused the big one for a while before I started to really realise how useful the littler one was. Especially once I'd bumped up my stamina to um, where I could pull off a lot of swings and still get away. I tended to, uh, once, once... Once I really got a handle on it, I tended to use the big sword for bigger guys and then break it down when we were going against the, the more little mookie guys. Really didn't need him getting involved at this point, if I'm honest. No one asked him. To, no one asked him! Look at him. Oh shit. Oh, this is giving me horrible flashbacks. Didn't like it. Didn't care for it, if I'm honest. It was at this point that I really did just get fucking annoyed. As I tell you, the, the, the way I finish her off is not elegant. It, there's no dignity in it, no skill. I, it, it really was, I have more health than you right now. Fuck off. Um, but that wasn't the moment, because I thought I could try and shoot her to interrupt her magic spell, and it didn't work. And then I just got like that. Don't like her. She's an asshole. I think it's a her. She makes a... Sounds like one when she dies. Spoilers. So anyway. Uh, we go in again. You know. It wouldn't be a, a Souls game video, I don't feel, without a, a couple of instances of you died. So, here we are. I was with my, um, my stepkid was watching me the whole time. So he got to watch me get my, uh, my ass kicked.
kicked up and down Bergenware. Decided to get rid of the big fly-headed things before I fought her this time. Seemed like the wise move. And so I got 21 blood vials there. I, I got rid of that eventually. That was what, uh, a rune. You can pick up runes and they can give you sort of nice little stat bumps and extras. They're fun to play with. But I equipped a rune at this point that gave me one extra blood vial, which isn't all that useful. I didn't have many other good runes at the time. But now I've got some ones that boost uh, stamina and damage reductions and things. Worth picking up. But my, um... Yeah, why not? My, uh, current outfit, <clears throat> the one I've taken with me to Endgame, is, um, cool. It's like a kind of got a Plague Doctor style mask and everything. I call it the crow. Crow outfit. Looks cool. Again, not the highest defense value, but it looks nice, and that's what matters. So there you can see the regain. When you get hit, you get a black bar of, of you know health that's gone, and then an orange bar of health. You can recover if you deal enough damage in time. Kind of part, part of their way of encouraging a more offensive playstyle. I always played the Souls games very defensively, so this did take getting used to, this uh, real sense of aggression. It really is annoying when they hit you and then they fucking run away. And you're like, dude, dude, I need my health back, come here. They're not very accommodating, if I'm honest. And sometimes I do to just cut my losses. <laughs> and like, yeah, I could try and regain that health, but but it's not worth trying. I've got the blood vials for it. Oh yeah, still went for another one. Just once she fires that fucking missile volley, it's all over. So. You can survive it like once if you get hit with it a bit and you're uh, at full health, so... Like I said, I really was not... Not fucking around here. Oh yeah, this is where I just lost it. I was like, you know what, fine, just hit me. You bastard. And then an end with a flourish. So that's fun. Um... What I've done is I've put in a little bit of other footage of other things. Here we are at the Forbidden Woods. Um, I was relatively new to this area. This is actually earlier than Bergenworth. But I was newer to this area, so just messing around here. These guys are uh, kind of upgradey mooks. They're not particularly dangerous, but they do hit hard. This is when I was still really uh, intent on using the big version of the sword, which isn't always useful and wasn't really particularly useful here in the Forbidden Woods. Which I kept wanting to call the Lost Woods, but that's something else. This is actually where this particular bit of armor came in more handy um, later on in the Forbidden Woods. There are all sorts of fuck nuts hanging around there. You may notice in some of this footage I am uh, particularly anal when it comes to trying to find uh, optional and hidden paths and little hidden things. Constantly swinging. Ouch. Me trying to be clever, that was. Still, got a lot of the health back. Always worth swinging at them as they're dying as well, because uh, the regain system still works as they're falling. You know, until they're actually ragdolls on the floor. 
Bloodborne's going to be one of the few games that still does that. That just turns their characters into weightless rag dolls like that when you've uh, killed them. Like, no matter how big they are. It's like, I like ragdoll physics and stuff, but... I would suggest maybe sticking them to the ground, at least if they're that big and they die. Because that, that's... It just wouldn't happen, would it? But it's fine. It's at least amusing. Maybe that's why they keep it. I finally picked this up. Blood vials. You can never have too many blood vials. Like that doesn't get wasted if you've got maximum blood vials and you pick them up. Um, they do have a use. Let's see these. I love these enemies just because they look so horrible. Just these oily crows that drag themselves along the floor almost as if their legs don't work properly. And they look so slick and oily. scared the shit out of me when I first met them because they just looked like a pile of trash and then just suddenly it was all rah, rah, rah. there we go smacking them up, it's pretty good now I hate him eventually I, I got to the point um, where you know he wasn't hitting me but here we are watching some people die which is always fun. But, uh, at some point, I'm going to have to do a Jimquisition maybe on multiplayer in Bloodborne and the Souls games. I did a, an article on it many years ago. So, like, I love the multiplayer experience that the Souls games has. Um, but yeah, we saw that note that says beware of a trap the player left for us. You can see it there. I think they're sly. Don't tread on that. Because that's up there. What a lot of fun that is. So we'll avoid that. But I'll probably do a Jimquisition, and the next Jimquisition episode will probably be on Bloodborne. Um, it's one of those uh, wonderful games that as you play it, and as, as I write the review for it, I realise, like, you know what, that charge attack feels really good to do when you time it right didn't time it right there, and it therefore consequently didn't feel good to do. Um, but anyway, um, if I don't do one on the multiplayer, it'll be on some other Bloodborne related subject. So I was writing the review and I was like, at th several times I wrote something and said I could turn this into a video, which I always feel is the, is the sign of a good game, <clears throat> or a particularly bad game, <laughs> depending on the what I'm writing and how. Um, but games like this inspire me to talk about how things are... You know, I'm not a game designer, I fully admit that, but I feel that having played and critically looked at games enough times, at least from the perspective of things that make me feel good as a player, there are design elements I've, I feel I've picked up on that are worth talking about from that perspective of someone who plays them, not necessarily someone who... <laughs> this is brilliant. <laughs> Stupid fucking dog. Oh dear, this is going to cut in a second because I, I think I must have gone for a piss or something. Um, but I did just stand there for ages, can't remember why, but... And then we're back. So, anyway. I hope that didn't sound arrogant. That's what happens when the charge attack works. Um, but anyway. <clears throat> Fatty voice. Anyway. Um... All that's to say is I, I sometimes chat a little bit about elements of, of the way a game's structured and paced that particularly please me. And then as I write them in the review, I'm like, you know what, I could extrapolate on this for a video. Which is good, it's extra content. That's always good to do. Normally, there are other things you can do, you don't just have to use your gun. I mean, that gun's not particularly good for drawing out a single enemy because it's got a spread. But you can get pebbles in the game and bait traps in the game. I'll say traps, just bait lures. It was cute that I went up there thinking I wouldn't get hit by those things. Um, but you can get a pebble and throw it at a guy if he's uh, hanging around with his mates and you don't fancy taking them all on at once, which I like. And just sort of draw them out. 
So what I was doing with that gun there, because I didn't have any pebbles equipped at the time. Going around collecting everything. So that's uh that was fun. Listen, I'm not I'm not the world's best <laughs> Bloodborne player, but I survive. And at the end of the day, isn't that what it's all about? Now these guys, you always want to try and get these guys. You, you don't want to swing the air. Like, I even ignore the deep crows behind me here because I wanted to kill him because they will run away. And they have good crafting materials, often. Sometimes. And to be honest, uh, what they drop eventually is just dropped by all sorts of things, but they're still worth... Uh, tracking down and grabbing. Either way, they run away, and pff, not on my watch. Except for all those times that it was on my watch when they did it. Some particular nasty one that tries to throw itself off a cliff. And there are so many blood pools at that cliff. <laughs> like a comical amount. Uh, oh dear. So, can I just tackle this fella here? This fella me do. Oi, come here. There we go. Nice overhead swing. Overhead swing on a two-handed weapon, in, um, or at least on this weapon, is done with the, the button you'd normally use to fire your gun. Of course, you don't have your gun in your hand, so you press that and it just sort of chops overhead. And that's, that's Bloodborne, really. Um, hope you enjoyed watching my little video on it. I was gonna do a... I might still do it, but I was gonna do more of a sort of just a fun silly compilation video of me killing things and being killed by things. Um, but as many of you know now, I, I ended up in the hospital just before I was about to edit that together. Um, I put the Bloodborne review up and I actually, to be honest, um, I'd started to have an allergic reaction to um, something. Um, as I was posting the review up, I was like, you know what, look, look, it's almost, it's 8.59. If I can just, just one more minute, I'll put it up, and then I've probably got to go to the hospital. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's that. Bye.